Love to hear from you this morning. OTBAM is brought to you by Gillette. Good morning. Start with Gillette. Put your best face forward with their new and improved razors. Time for the performance rankings. You know, that wasn't an All-Ireland winning performance. Probably should have won the game based on the second half performance. Is it a step too far to say it was the performance so far of the World Cup? Maybe not. OTBAM's performance rankings with Gillette. I'm, I'm, I'm scratching my head. That performance is with just lack that intensity. Eamon Dunphy and David Myler are going to join us in the next hour or so to pick through the carcass of England's European Championship defeat last night. And I don't know where Burberry shirt man is going here. Oh, and you could put him in the green if you were of a certain nationalistic hue, or you could stick him straight in the red. It's up to you. I, I think uh, Burberry guy is, is green no matter what way you look at it. Uh, as you can see here, England fans, World Cup 2030, both in the red. I was looking forward to being from a country that was going to host a World Cup in whatever it is, nine years' time. Those dreams were shattered when I went on to Twitter yesterday and I saw an English man with a firecracker up his arse. Those dreams... Uh, that was amazing. In, we haven't talked about this enough, actually. In, Sorry. in terrible fashion. Sorry, you're right. You're right. How did we not even... That, that was the lead in the show this morning. Yeah. Like, I mean... <laughs> it must be sore. Uh, yes. It must be sore. It's like really hard plastic. And to get it right up there, it must, it like... And it's, dangerous. It's not, I know, I, I realise that, you know, there are toys that, but they're, like, they're, they're ergonomically designed. This is designed for sticking in the ground. It like, is, yeah. and, I mean, and also, it must be hot. Like, the stuff burns at a massive temperature, that's why we get the fancy colours. Like, what was, what were they thinking? Like and why does this happen with English football fans? Yeah, like if if it wasn't guys getting cheered for uh, putting firecrackers up their ass, it was guys snorting lines and getting uh, sarcastically cheered every time uh, they did so in front of a massive crowd of uh, very interested spectators. So the only one that, that that I saw was the one that was on Sky, <laughs> was on Sky that was doing the rounds on WhatsApp, uh, and then somebody put what was the song they put to it? Some somebody had dubbed a song to it. I can't even remember what it was now. Uh, were there more? Uh, I, I, I'm not sure which was the one on Sky. Uh, it was, I presume if you mentioned it was on Sky, it was somebody in the background getting picked up. This was very much uh, fan footage, somebody being held aloft and uh, a, a big sort of like lull in a cheer and then a big cheer once uh, the job was done uh, and uh, rinse and repeat. But uh, like uh, I guess as you, as you mentioned there, the, the Battle of Wembley Way certainly might have uh, done away with our chances of, of hopping on the bandwagon at this 2030 World Cup. Like there were, of, of course, Burberry Man uh, would have prevented the, the dreams being realised on a number of occasions, but there were little moments of, of genius, like the people who took the big metal barrier and turned it almost from like landscape to portrait and then prece proceeded to climb it like a ladder to get Spirit into the Spirit of the Blitz. Spirit of the Blitz. That is li literally your trench and you've managed to go up over the trench and run into no man's land and I guess ultimately also get Plugged. destroyed by uh, Italians. Uh, that's uh, how that went for them. Um, but but in, in general, I, I guess this, this stream is over, isn't it? Like the, the idea that Wembley were going to be able to, to successfully pull this off probably wasn't uh, a fanciful notion. It, it is supposedly uh, the, one of the best stadiums in the world. It is supposedly one of the best lo logistic operations in the world if, you, if you're looking for any country to host a football tournament and they sort of blew it last night and as a result we've been dragged down with them. It definitely appears as if being able to safely get people in and out of the stadium, managing the flow of people who have tickets and who don't have tickets will be a prerequisite for organising an international football tournament like the World Cup say but you know politics, we all know FIFA, strange, mm. maybe something will happen that will win them over. Like, did they get Firecracker Man to Neon for him to apologise? Firecracker Man, uh, Burberry shirt guy. The guy, the naked, the naked like Orange so, steward. You knew, you knew it was a final when the English fans weren't just satisfied with taking their top off and jiggling. They had to take everything off and jiggle everything. And that, that happened on a number of occasions. <laughs> it did, it did, it did. The, the Statue of David and the... Statue of David. Small penis man, it was like... <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> you, kn you knew that it was a final at that point, that this wasn't just any old quarterfinal oh, yeah. that England were going to lose on penalties. In fairness, is, in fairness is, right? So maybe he apologises in Eon as you well. You have to say that they didn't, they didn't reach absolute book mental state until yesterday. It's true. They were they, saving something back. I, I, you've got to. Like, it was a marathon, not a sprint. They fully understood that. Hmm. They waited until the very last minute to go completely crazy. And when they went crazy, they hit the extreme button and, and, and nothing stopped them. Absolutely nothing stopped them. I don't know what happened last night. I, I can't. There's there's not much footage coming through from after the game. It, it seems to. I don't know. Uh, my work this morning has not yet given me the opportunity to fully peruse the uh, the usual uh, sites, and <laughs> I can just see trending <laughs> in, trending in Ireland shocking scumbags Leicester Square. <laughs> What's happening? Sports trending it's London. Oh. Shocking scumbags. Sterling, Leicester Square. The That's thing is, it. the thing is as well. Once you, once the camera pans to the crowd in a major tournament final, you start to notice a more middle class tint to what you're seeing. There, it, it's almost like you're looking at a at a Wimbledon crowd more so than a football crowd when it comes to a final, because obviously the tickets are extraordinarily expensive. But because people had snuck in, what you had were these images of an extraordinarily middle class English crowd juxtaposed with naked man jiggling his bits because he had managed to take the ladder and storm Wembley. <laughs> like it was just <laughs> the worst snapshot of, of Britain you're ever likely to see. And may maybe like, I mean, maybe yeah, U UEFA and, and, and FIFA most importantly, you're like, God, yeah. Bring it on. The raucous stuff we like, that distracts from all our politics. Uh, you, can, you can have every World Cup if, if your fans keep that behavior up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I made the mistake of, of tweeting yesterday at around about 20 past 10, long before the penalty shootout. If England ever get a decent goalkeeper, they'll be amazing. Uh, the Everton fans are not happy. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> give, us a, give us a sample. I can't, I can't. It's effing C was just the, the most... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was like, I missed his tweet. Yeah, to which right. I just replied, ha. <laughs> well, you're, <laughs> you're in the green this morning. Uh, like the, the, your, your Pickford... Uh, take has a sort, a sort of come to fruition, I, I, I guess. Are, are you sitting here smugly this morning? No, no, I, I thought that, um, I mean, Pickford obviously has nailed himself on to be the England goalkeeper now for the foreseeable future. And I, I just think that, like, there's a panic around Pickford when, when he's playing that can't be good for centre backs. Like, if, if Alisson played in that England team, would they have done better across the course of the tournament? Would they be more brave playing out from the back? I think they probably would. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I, I'm actually fully in agreement on the area that England need to strengthen to win the next World Cup, and it's, it's the goalkeeper, a better goalkeeper, and um, th they're possibly in a better position. Now, of course, the, it would have been twisted to Pickford as this national hero had they won the penalty shootout last night, and in the penalty shootout, he was actually really good. Oh, so, sensational. But, so, but that, that's not what the, the conversation is about, and um, yeah, Donnarumma was obviously quite good as well, but Pickford saves were, were actually probably a little bit more challenging, and... Um, I, I mean, the, the, the Jorginho moment, you just thought to yourself, if that goes into the back of the net, England don't necessarily need a scapegoat because they will hammer the referee because Jorginho possibly should have been sent off and he was on the pitch and he scores the winning penalty. And there you go, that's, that's your satisfying, um, angry ending to, to the night. But in, in a weird way, they, they didn't have to go that way because Pickford saved it and, and ultimately it was down to the, the, the three English players to miss. Uh, which kind of brings us nicely on to the, the orange this morning here in the performance rankings, which is the grand. I think a lot of people will have Southgate in the red. I suspect I'm putting him in the orange this morning. Just, again, kind of like Pickford, if Bakayo Saka scores that penalty last night. But for me, if Marcus Rashford rolls that one into the back of the net, the Mar Marcus Rashford is the most galling of them all because he had done all the, he had won the psychological war and all he had to do was roll the ball into the back of the net and he hits the post. It's, Absolutely gut wrenching for him. If he scores that, it goes to to, to sudden death, and, and England win. Southgate is a is a genius. Uh, you you have Sterling and Grealish then stepping up in sudden death uh, if, if it goes that far, and they score, and the the whole notion of putting Sack in the firing line gets diminished, and it, it the the difference between him being the scapegoat and one of the greatest managers of all time. I feel was quite thin last night and, and that's why he's in the orange rather than the red. His wing backs that, that he started obviously, that, that's the reason why they got the first goal and they were causing Italy serious damage in the opening stages of the game to the point where you're like I can see a massive hole on the right and a massive hole on the left and England are constantly exploiting that. It looked like Italy's midfield was invisible for the first quarter of the match and then 
Italy started to change things, they started to get things right, and Southgate didn't have an answer to that particular question then. I think the substitutes, it's been something that's been a criticism of them throughout the tournament. We're suspecting their timing, bringing Jack Grealish on in the 99th minute, I'm sure is something that probably uh, frustrated you, uh, not seeing him until the 99th minute, and even Sancho and Rashford being brought on. I don't buy the idea that you can't take a penalty if you if you haven't been on the pitch. I mean, it's uh, do you need to be fully warm and do you need to be like on the pitch for half an hour in order to take a penalty correctly? I'm not sure you do. But could Sancho, for example, have made a greater impact by coming on earlier in extra time? Same story with, with maybe Marcus Rashford. Maybe not both, but one of them. If you bring them on earlier, you go for it a bit more in extra time, and maybe they don't need penalties. So that's why. So Southgate gets good marks for you for the tournament. He gets deducted points for being too conservative in the final, and that's why he's in the middle. Is that it? You, you know, within the final, I think he got it right actually at the start of, of okay. The final, so yeah. specifically within the final, the team selection was correct. The uh, it's just that as the game progressed, they withdrew into their shells. Mm. Italy got better, and you're not giving them either points for or against for the late substitutions. I've given points against for the for the timing of the late substitutions. Like I think yeah, for the timing of them, but not for the fact that he made them <coughs> to sub on for the penalties. Oh, uh, no! I, th- I I actually think that that's that's an okay decision. I I think that there was they had a plan beforehand, and I mean, you could easily just throw that out when you're in the, the heat of the battle and say, right, we're not going to follow through with this, we're going to keep the people on the pitch who fought all night. They had a plan for penalties. They had to remove the emotion from penalty shootouts as a result of all the pain they've experienced in that format down through the years. And they followed through with that plan. That was like that was on the table beforehand and, and they went through with it. And I think there's only so much criticism you can level at the manager for that because as a manager, you're, you try to plan for every single eventuality. And he did that and he executed the plan. And... The players didn't execute the penalties, and for me, it's it's kind of their fault more than Southgate's. Is 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 unfortunately how I look at it, and I know a lot of people would, would disagree with that because I see Southgate getting criticism for for uh, subbing them on too late, and maybe you do need to be on the pitch and it'd be a little bit uh, more more warmed up and all that. My only take on the, on the two people he puts on to take penalties is that neither of them seem to be in particularly good form at the moment and certainly were not players that he had trusted over the course of the tournament. So perhaps if they'd had a bit more game time over the course of the tournament and you were turning to them in that hour of need, in that moment of need, in that 10 seconds of need, then they have confidence in you having confidence in them and so therefore they're going up to that like looking like they're going to score. At the same time, Rashford takes a good penalty for 90% of it where the eyes work, the pause works, Mm. it's just the final bit of execution is a hair's breadth away from being absolutely perfect and and everybody going holy moly look at him low on confidence and look at the penalty he scores their balls of steel um, the point Roy Keane was making on ITV I, I saw this the video of it this morning is that where where are the players who are senior to in particular Sancho and uh what 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 what's going through their mind? So what's going through Grealish's mind? What's going through Raheem Sterling's mind? Watching the kids go up, who haven't played, um, I don't know. Well, like it, it it is interesting because Grealish and Sterling, while you look to them and say right they're more senior than Bukayo Saka and they are attackers, therefore they should be taking penalties. You kind of look at the season that we've just seen in the Premier League, like. That game when Kevin De Bruyne defers to Raheem Sterling to take a penalty and Sterling blazes it over the bar comes yeah. to mind. Jack Grealish never really stepped into the penalty taking void when there was one for Villa during the season. Like El Ghazi was taking penalties for for a lot of the season and the, the duties were there to be taken. So it's not like that you've got two Harry Kane's stepping up here or, or two uh, well known penalty takers. It's kind of actually the opposite if you look in their recent form and that's why it's left to Saka. Now, Saka, of course, has no form either. He's never taken a senior penalty in his life before, so they should still supersede that. And I do think that the list of penalty takers was strange in that regard. I would definitely have had Sterling and Grealish ahead of him, but maybe they miss as well. I, I wouldn't entirely have been filled with confidence to, to see them stepping up. Like That being said, you look at the Italian penalty takers, and you kind of knew Bellotti was going to miss when he stepped up. I was astonished that Jorginho missed, but there was kind of a look about some of the penalty takers that Italy had as well, and you're like, on paper, England should be winning this shootout if it's just down to the takers and your worry, your sole worry really was with Pickford versus Donnarumma and as it turned out that wasn't the deciding factor because Pickford did quite well Pickford did brilliantly in the penalties, that's the thing he's, he's obviously an excellent shot stopper, it's just the complete package when you're looking at somebody who every time they make a save is like out screaming like 
in the din of a full stadium, you can still hear him smacking his gloves together after every single save, screaming at everybody. When, the, when a free kick goes wide, he's out screaming at people going, well, he, you made the wall. Like, what, what are you screaming at? And it, obviously, it's just to G him up. Yeah, it, it actually it, it, it did seem at times that Pickford was just channeling the madness in, inside in him at, when um, Italy were really trying to turn the screw late on in that game. So maybe maybe they use this, and this is the start of their World Cup winning run. But I'm just not sure. Tournaments are so bloody hard to win, especially if you're England. And to get the legs up that they got over the past few weeks, really, it, it was it will go down as one of their best ever opportunities given how flaky some of their opponents were, and not the direct opponents, I mean some of the, the heavy hitters elsewhere in the tournament, the fact that it was essentially a home tournament for them as well, maybe got a bit of the rub of the green with the Sterling decision against Denmark. You need those things to go your way in a major tournament to win it. And England had all that, <clears throat> and they didn't win it. So you, like, it's not an automatic thing that they come back and automatically even contend at the next World Cup, and there will be questions asked about Southgate and whether or not he is the man to lead England into the next World Cup. I personally think that's harsh. I think that he sh absolutely should be. But the reasonable question that would be out there is, he's a good manager and he's done a good job, but could England be doing even better with a better manager? And I don't think you can make a case that he's a a an outstanding manager or, or would get a top job in the Premier League. So that's maybe a decision that might that the FA might face. But I think before 2022... There's no the way they're Cup, making that. No, there's yeah, no way. Yeah, I'd, I'd be astonished. He'll be given the World Cup in Qatar, and you would expect that maybe at that point he's done enough to get another good job himself. Or, if, like, I don't know, maybe if they win that, he sticks on, he stays on. But, OK, so what's next? Well, in the green, it's uh, it's all Italy, really, in, in the green. Italy's defence, like... <sighs> Sometimes when, especially like during lockdown, when we've gone back and watched old games that have been in the not too distant past, we're like, God, I really wish I appreciated this team a little bit more. And there was just kind of this crystallized moment last night where I actually kind of did appreciate what this Italian team is, where you have the molding of two, not golden generations, but two different generations in a beautiful defense and Chiellini and Benucci in front of Donnarumma, who obviously is, I guess, essentially the hero from an Italian perspective at the end of the day last night. Just, they, they were so good to watch in that department all throughout the tournament, whether it was like Benucci and his, his beautiful vision from, from the back or Chiellini and, I guess, laughing at uh, opposition captains or, uh, I guess, pulling Bukayo Saka when he had every opportunity to clear the ball himself moments beforehand. The, the sort of cheeky shithousery that exists within their psyche, uh, which is just kind of underlied with uh, just uh, incredible talent. I love that 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 kind of triangle of Donnarumma, Chiellini, Bellucci, and we may not see it again in the tournament. So they're absolutely in the green. Uh, and also Roberto Mancini is, is in the green. He, from basically the moment he got the Italian job, he said that this was going to be his target. He said he wanted to take Italy back to where they deserve to be, to be on top of Europe and the world. You've not won a European Championship for many years, so that would be our first objective. And he's gone and done it, didn't qualify for the World Cup, got knocked out in the playoffs in pretty dramatic fashion. They looked at a really low ebb. They're Italy, so they can never be discounted before a tournament, but they were outside the top three or four when people were making their pre-tournament predictions. There was no suggestion that they were in the same conversation as France and Portugal and, and maybe even England going into this tournament and it was only throughout that maybe we became familiar with this team and familiar with the fact that Roberto Mancini has maybe been at times underrated as a manager and we, there, there was a, a lack of appreciation for what he actually did to, to get Manchester City over the line in, in 2012 and uh, I, I think now he's, he's put together a CV that is right up there with any of the, the other managers around the world to actually go into international management and to succeed like this is it, brilliant and it's Fantastic. It's not Bonucci and Chiellini that, that warms your heart about this Italian team. It's Mancini and Viali. Yeah, and, and just the quality of the football that they played, particularly in that semi-final when you know they were on the rack against what it turns out is a very good Spain team. They still had the bravery to continue to play and, and also all of the things that you have come to associate with Italy. So it's like a perfect modern version of what Italian football should be. And if they get a striker, they're going to be very difficult to beat. It's like yeah. if England get a goalkeeper, they're going to be very difficult to beat. Uh, okay, so Mancini was number one, Italy's defence was number two, Gareth Southgate in the middle, that is dividing opinion. Uh, World Cup 2030, it's now just a dream, and England fans, maybe it's better for us that we don't have a World Cup in 2030. Do you remember the sadness we felt about England-Germany not going ahead in Dublin 
and the scenes, oh the scenes, look at those scenes that we missed of England fans sacking Temple Bar, pillaging it. In, in retrospect, maybe we didn't miss those scenes. Maybe we dodged a bullet. I, I can't believe you're making that suggestion, Ger. I can't believe that you're suggesting that, that English fans in Dublin wouldn't have been a joyous experience for everybody involved. Like when, when people try to make the, the case uh, that the, oh, the hosting the Olympic Games might have cost your economy $15 billion, but it's uh, good for the legacy. Like were, were we ever trying to make that case that uh, hosting English fans in Dublin was going to be good for the legacy of the city? I'm not quite sure we were. And uh, I, the, the, the main thing is it's a 2030 World Cup. Those go, uh, those go in uh, the direction of this bid that now looks uh, like it's not going to happen then I would say that uh, the, the key point is avoiding England in the group and avoiding the, the, the visit of England fans at all costs. The performance rankings are with thanks to Gillette. We're giving you the chance to win a Gillette starter pack this Monday morning. To have the chance of winning, tell us who you reckon should be on our performance rankings and the winner will be picked before 9.30 a.m. OTBAN's performance rankings with Gillette.